So good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for joining uh, this Friends of the Park seminar. Ranger Laurel Brannick is going to graciously share with us today her knowledge about the native birds of St. John. Um, I see some familiar faces and names. It's really nice to see more than 40 or so people here. My name is Tonya Lovejoy. I've worked with the Friends for a couple of years. And I'm so happy to share this seminar. We do many seminars. Um, if you visit our website, contact us, we can share those with you. You ready to start? Without further ado, I'm gonna pass over to Laurel and uh, I will share my screen or rather let you share your screen. Thank you. Yeah. All right, well, good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining to learn about the birds of St. John. Um, you know, the park is over 50% of the island of St. John. There's lots of wildlife to see, but probably the most um, animal you're gonna see is the birds. There's many kinds of birds. Did There's birds in the mangroves, birds in the moist tropical forest, birds in the dry tropical forest, birds in your yard birds in the sky, we just have lots of birds. And I already did this presentation once before, but um, since the first presentation, the local Audubon Society did the Christmas bird count. We've been doing it for over 30 years. And so I'll also add some information about how some of the birds are doing because those two you know, devastating hurricanes that we had in 2017 were not really good for the birds. And some of them were almost absent after the storm. But things seem to be going in the right direction. And so I'll tell you a little bit about that. So let me share my screen. Host disabled participant screen sharing. Come on, host. Nobody can. All right, share my screen. There it is. Share. Uh, Let me see, I just wanna make sure I can share it with sound. Share computer sound. Okay. Uh, oh. All right, I'm having a little thing here. Let me see, I gotta go back. Stop. Okay. Um, give me a minute, it's not working right. Stop and show. Uh, okay, here we go. All right, so most of the pictures in this uh, presentation are taken from my friend and, and fellow bird watcher, Gail Clarson. She comes with me on lots of the bird walks and participated in the Christmas bird count. This is our official bird, the banana quit. If you're not familiar, let me see if I can hold this up. We do have a quarter here in the Virgin Islands, part of the quarters for the United States. And on the quarter for the Virgin Islands is the picture of the banana quit. Now, lots of times you um, hear birds before you see them. So that is the very familiar sound of the banana quit. And the banana quits are doing well. You know, any bird after the storm that fed on nectar or seeds um, wasn't doing very well because there wasn't a leaf left on a tree. So forget about flowers or fruit or anything like that. But people here put out sugar feeders and the banana quits like that. And so we did get quite a bit of banana quits on the bird count. Another little native yellow bird, uh, doesn't come to your sugar feeder, is the yellow warbler. These birds feed more on in insects. They have this little tweezer-like bill. And this bird has a very sweet song. So 
Some people say he's saying, sweet, sweet, I'm so sweet. The Lesser Antillian Bullfinch. Um, we're not really part of the Lesser Antilles. We're considered more of the Greater Antilles. And so this bird wasn't always on St. John. We believe it was blown in a previous hurricane in like the 1980s. And this is a bird when people come here on vacation, they want to see it because it's not common in North America. The male has that little red under his chin and the female is more brownish. These birds will come to your sugar feeder and this is what they sound like. So I'm happy to say that both finches seem to be doing good too. The Hummers, the Hummers really took it hard after the hurricane. This is the biggest of our two hummingbirds. I mean, these birds weigh like the amount of a nickel. So we had over 200 mile an hour winds. Um, I personally put out my sugar uh, hummingbird feeder immediately after the storm. I brought it inside before the storm. And usually there's about two hummingbirds at the feeder because they don't tolerate very many of them there at once, but there was dozens of them. Um, and after the storm, this is the first hummingbird we noticed that was making a comeback. The smaller one seemed to be struggling. So this is the smaller one. The uh, Antillian crested hummingbird. And um, this bird, I personally didn't see for like a year or two after the storm. When we did the bird count in 2019, I said, well, the good news is there's one Antillian crested hummingbird and the bad news is there's one Antillian crested hummingbird. But this year, I only turned in about 20 or so sheets for my fellow counters. I, there was about a dozen um, Antillian crested hummingbirds represented on the sheets that I turned in. And so the good news is there's more than one Antillian crested hummingbird. <laughs> and this is just a photo. Um, this is the only photo in the show that's not Gail's, it's mine. After the hurricane, when I put the feeder out, and it was drained so quickly. This little guy would not let go when I was taking it down to refill it. He just was sitting there waiting for me to refill it. So I'm very happy that we're starting to see more Antillian crested hummingbirds. This bird is pretty abundant. This is the gray kingbird. It's the flycatcher. He's called the kingbird because he's the king of catching flies. And you could see him out in the park in the mangroves, but you could also see him on telephone wires. The local people call him the policeman's whistle. Everybody knows this bird. A lot of people don't like him. He is a yeah, thief. We don't like him will steal you know potato chips and french fries and sandwiches from your picnic but yeah. i look at it he's a true survivor i mean i think this was the first bird i saw after the hurricane he was right out in the yard looking to see what had blown outside and was there to eat this is yeah. the pearly eyed thrasher The smooth-billed Ani, he kind of has like a parrot-like bill. He's all black. The local folks call him the black witch. I had somebody turn in a sheet where it said one Ani, and I was going to tell them you weren't looking hard enough because there's never one Ani. They're always in a flock. They even nest together. They put all their eggs in one big nest. So he has a very um, nice call, which sounds like this. <laughs> You can always tell when they're in the area because you can hear that call. These birds are the brown-throated conures. They're little parakeets. And they're sometimes called St. Thomas conures because they've been in St. Thomas since the late 1700s. It's very interesting how they might have gotten here. Um, there's stories of how they might have come here with pirates. You know, pirates have parrots on their shoulders. They didn't carry them around as pets. They were more carrying them around for trading. You know, they were worth money. And they were very abundant in St. Thomas, but they got blown over here after Irma. And um, they're still here. There's at least a dozen people that live in town see them. I've seen them as far as Catherineburg. 
and um, they're very chatty. I don't have a recording of their call, but they're very pretty and um, hopefully you'll see them on St. John. The mangrove cuckoo. People sometimes ask me if we have monkeys on St. John because this is the call of the mangrove cuckoo. And it does sound like a monkey. And um, they seem to be doing uh, well since the storms. They eat a lot of insects, um, katydids, and, and even stick insects. They have very good eyesight. This is one of the seed eaters that wasn't doing great. People have said they saw numerous of them that passed away during the storm in their yard. Um, the scaly nape pigeon. It's a very pretty bird. It's a pretty big bird. It's got that ring around its eye. If you listen to its call, it sounds like it's saying, who are you? Driving out on the North Shore to the spots where I was going to count, I saw numerous uh, scaling a pigeons on the wires. This is a new bird for St. John, the white winged dove. Some people aren't happy when new birds come because they think they displace some of the native birds, like the Zenata dove, which I'll show you soon. That's our morning dove. And um, this bird has an interesting call. He's saying, Who cooks for you? <laughs> Now here's our native morning dove, the Zenata dove. And this is the one that's been here forever. Um, they seem to be doing okay. I scattered um, cracked corn in my yard. They seem to really like that because I always feel like I should be giving them a little extra assistance since the storms. size common ground dove. It's not a baby dove. It's just smaller. Um, it's not as common as the Veneta dove, but you can find it on the trails. Like when I do the Francis Bay bird walk, the, it's in the dry tropical forest. And this is the call from the common ground dove. <laughs> Oh, this is probably my favorite bird on St. John. This is the very pretty bridled quail dove. Um, out of all the national parks in the system, I think this is the only national park where you can see this bird. It's a Caribbean bird, you know, lives in the West Indies. The other national parks in the West Indies, like in St. Croix, are forts. They're not really forested areas. Um, in Puerto Rico, where there's El Yanque, that's a national forest, it's not a national park, because you'll probably find the bird there. So if somebody said to me, what's the best bird to see in Virgin Islands National Park, I would probably say the bridal quail dove, since it's so unique. And um, often you hear this bird before you see it. It likes to walk around in the leaf litter, so it's not as obvious, you know, flying around. <laughs> Sounds like somebody's blowing over the top of a bottle. This bird, um, there's a few of them around, but it still seems to be, you know, not as abundant as it was before the storm. Uh, one of the prime habitats of the bird was Cinnamon Bay, which we know the campground is under construction. Uh, you can still hear a few of them in the nature loop. You can see them at L'Esperance and Reef Bay. Hopefully once the campground is, you know, finished and not disturbed as much, there'll be some more of them in the campground. 
And so I'm hoping to see more of them in the park. This is a really new bird for St. John. This is the Eurasian collared dove. And it doesn't seem to be found too far out of town and in the park. I mean, the only place in the national park I've seen it is in the playground right by the visitor center. <laughs> Very washed out looking. It's called the Eurasian collar dove. The little black faced grass quit. This is another bird people like to see when they come here because it's not common in North America. It's a little seed eating bird. Sometimes people might say, I saw a sparrow. They probably didn't see a sparrow. They probably saw the little black faced grass quit. <laughs> Now, so far all the birds I've shown you are permanent residents. They live here all the time. But this time of year, the winter, we have some neotropical migrants, some birds that are coming here just like tourists because they wanna get away from the cold. It's not because they feel the cold because they do have like feathers, but it's because you know the insects that they feed on are dormant or the ponds that they're feeding at freeze over. And so these are some warblers. These are American red starts. They're very colorful little songbirds. And you don't usually hear them singing here because they sing when they're breeding, but this is their call. And they can be found in the Cinnamon Bay Nature Loop and the Reef Bay Trail, Les Bronze. Same as the bridal quail dove, the moist tropical forest parts of St. John. Oh, this is a black and white warbler. He looks like a little zebra. He acts like a little woodpecker. He likes to go up and down the branches and look for insects to eat. You might see him by some termite trails. So he was present for the Christmas bird count. The other little warbler is the Northern Perula. This one is more like in the dry tropical forest than in the mangroves. This is the prairie warbler. He's got very interesting markings on his face. You know, when I first started bird watching, I did not see a lot of warblers because it takes a lot of patience. You have to like stand still in the same spot for, I don't know, quite a few minutes to see them because they, they don't sit still, they hop around and you gotta get your binoculars up quick, but it's very rewarding if you do take the time to see them. They've flown a long way. A majority of them are coming from Canada. And you know the fact that they make it here and find St. John to be in the park is pretty amazing. And this is the little northern water thrush. This likes to be down on the leaf litter in the mangroves. This is a real common um, migratory warbler. Okay, back to permanent residents. The smallest falcon in North America is the American kestrel and we have plenty of them here. They like to pick off all the lizards that we have. There's no shortage of lizards after the storm. I mean, I saw lots of lizards, they survived the hurricane. I saw a video somewhere where the lizards have like Velcro on their feet and somebody was doing an experiment where they were blowing them with a leaf blower and it showed how during the hurricane they can hang on to the trees. And so uh, there was no leaves on the trees. So the lizards were easy pickings for the birds that ate lizards. Okay, for some reason my screen is not going to next. Okay, another uh, bird of prey is the red-tailed hawk. You see them soaring above, sometimes they're called chicken hawks. Now, 
Well, I am not sure someone got a peregrine falcon for the Christmas bird count. And that is because we had no boat. Usually we have a small boat that goes out and checks the offshore keys, which are right, you know, inside the park's boundary in the water, because the peregrine falcons like to eat the seabird chicks. Um, but because we have small craft advisory, the boat didn't go out. So I'll be very curious to see if someone got a peregrine falcon. They're usually here. We do not have any rivers, lakes, or streams on St. John. We have seasonal salt ponds, and uh, we have quite a few of them in the park. Probably the most popular one is the Francis Bay salt pond. That's where I do the bird walks on Fridays, and I'm thinking of maybe starting them up in February because I might be fortunate enough to be getting my COVID vaccine soon. So uh, I'll post something on Facebook if we're going to start the bird walks up. And February is kind of like the peak month to see birds because you have all the permanent residents, and you also have all the neotropical migrants here. And usually February is rainy. And so the ponds are full of water and the birds like that. So they're out and about swimming around. So this is our native duck, the white cheek pintail. And the pintails are doing well. We counted a lot of pintails for the bird count. In general, the birds from the ponds did better after Irma than the forest birds because the ponds were still there. The ponds didn't blow away like the forest blew away. This is a migratory duck, the blue winged teal. And um, you can see the pretty blue in its wings when it flies. And we did have some blue winged teal here for the Christmas bird count. Oh, this is a really cool duck. Some people say he looks like he came from Disneyland with his blue bill. This is a ruddy duck. He likes deep water. He's a diving duck. He has a stiff tail like a flag. And this bird was present. Uh, people saw him in the Mandel Pond and um, in the pond by Hart Bay. This is the common gallinue or marsh hen. This bird's doing well. It was seen in lots of different ponds. Uh, seen by Maho, by Francis Bay, by Hart Bay, by Mandel. <laughs> Caribbean coot or the American coot. These birds were present for the Christmas bird count. Again, they're another deep water diving marsh bird. Um, it sound. The little grebe. This bird is like a little submarine. And um, this bird was present for the Christmas bird count as well as the other grebe, the pie bill grebe. And this bird was seen nesting um, at Keneal Bay in a pond. <laughs> the clapper rail. This bird was seen in quite a few ponds. He's a very noisy bird. He creeps around the mangroves. He likes to eat those little fiddler crabs. So that's definitely a bird sometimes you hear before you see. So if you hear that, you just have to focus in on where the sound was coming from and hopefully you'll get to see it. The little blue heron, this confuses people sometimes because the, the adult little blue heron is blue, but the juvenile little blue heron is not blue, he's white, but he looks different from the catalogus. You can see he's got those yellowish legs. <laughs> And if you think about where you see the bird, I mean, if you see the bird in the mangroves, it's probably the little blue heron. And if you see the bird on the back of a cow, it's probably the cattle egret. The great blue heron, this is not a permanent resident. He migrates here, but he was present for the bird count. He's much taller than the little blue heron. <laughs> This is a very beautiful tricolored heron. It's not what I would say is common, but I have seen it at Francis Bay. It was reported in Fish Bay. It's a very pretty tall bird. 
I think Gail says he's wearing white underpants. This is a small heron, the smallest of the herons we have, the little green heron. And this bird was seen in quite a few ponds. The night herons, we have two night herons. They have a big eye because they like to come out and hunt at night. In the day, they're usually tucked away in the shade. This is the yellow crown night heron. They like to eat those big land crabs. And so this bird was reported for the count. And here is the small of the night herons and the less common of the night herons, but this bird was reported, so I was happy because he's kind of elusive. Um, I was on a bird walk with some children from the Sproul School one year, and they said to me, look, Ranger Laurel, a penguin. And I says, a penguin? <laughs> and then I saw it was this bird. And I, I guess if you watch uh, the cartoon Penguins of Madagascar, this does look close, um, like it could be a penguin. <laughs> Black crown night heron. Oh, this bird is everywhere on the roads, on the beaches. This is the great egret. This is the bird that inspired the beginnings of the Audubon Society. In the early 1900s, there was a tradition of shooting birds at Christmas instead of counting them. And some people thought it was appalling that they were shooting birds just to shoot them for their feathers. Ounce for ounce, the feathers were worth more than gold. They were used in ladies fashion. So people banded together to make laws to protect the birds from being shot for their feathers. And that is how the Audubon Society started. And so now we count birds at Christmas instead of shooting them. The great egret. The snowy egret with his golden slippers. This is a cattle egret that you're probably gonna see on the back of a cow, a goat, or a donkey. Now, the scarlet ibis. The scarlet ibis is from Trinidad and Tobago. And last year, a flock of scarlet ibises dispersed themselves here in the U.S. and the British Virgin Islands. Richard Branson did bring some into his private island, Necker Island. We're not sure if the ibises that were on St. Thomas, St. Croix, Yost Van Dyke, St. John were from Richard's flock or if they were maybe from Trinidad. But we had two of them here on St. John. We had one in Fish Bay and one in the Annaberg Pond. And it was beautiful. Everybody was, you know, seeing it. It was counted for the Christmas bird count. But now, sadly, we have not seen it for a couple of months. Gail did say she would give a prize to someone who saw the scarlet ibis. And I looked this morning when I was driving Charles out to Annaberg. We're hoping it comes back. But we did have another beautiful bird show up on the bird count. And I'm going to have to think of some kind of prize for Gail because she did get a picture of this purple galano. And I was lucky enough to see it with her. Wow. Um, yes, it's very pretty. It's, it's purple. I mean, we don't really have any other purple birds on St. John. It can be seen in Cuba. Uh, so its range is close to us. And um, hopefully it's gonna stick around. This was seen at, at a pond on Keneal Bay, which is kind of a private pond because it's hard to get into Keneal Bay. But I have seen it once before on St. John in the pond by Maho Bay, which is on the road. So I'm gonna keep my eyes open and see if we see any more purple gallons. The black neck stilt, which looks like he's wearing a tuxedo, is a common shorebird. He looks like he's, you know, a Mako Jumbi. And he's real common in lots of ponds, plenty of stilts this year. He's very noisy. The lesser yellow legs. We have two kinds of yellow legs. This is a migratory shorebird. We did get them counted for the bird count. This is the smaller one, but since his name is lesser. And then the greater yellow legs, which is taller than the other yellow legs. 
It's hard to tell them apart unless you see them with each other or with the stilt. The tall, the greater yellow legs approaches more of the height of the stilt. The little spotted sandpiper. When I learned about birds, I learned about them from the original bird ladies, Thelma and B. And they called this bird the non-spotted spotted sandpiper because when he comes, he does not have his spots, which he has when he's in breeding plumage in the States. This is probably the most common of the shorebirds and he's the first to come and the last to leave. And he was seen in many ponds. Ruddy turnstones, not as common as the spotted sandpiper, a small shorebird with those bright orange legs. Uh, they were counted this year. The plover, some smaller shorebirds that are usually darting in and out of the waves on the beaches and the shorelines. This is a semi palmated plover. Then there's the permanent resident, Wilson's Plover. And another bird I really enjoy seeing, and I did get to see one at Francis Bay. They're not so common. They're called the American Oyster Catcher. They're usually along the coastlines and people have more of a chance to see them from boats because they're in remote areas. But folks do see them in Fish Bay and we were lucky enough to see one at Francis Bay. He literally has a bill that looks like a carrot. Um, sometimes folks here, we don't have a lot of oysters here. We have whelks. He's called the whelk cracker. This is the belted kingfisher, a migratory bird that hangs out at the shoreline with the pelicans to eat all the bait fish. That's kind of like a rattle. The pelican, oh, what happened to the pelican? Our permanent resident, probably most known um, seabird. They seem to be doing good. We didn't see as much because people weren't counting on the boats but we'll see what everybody else turns in when the results are published. Um, I'm sure, you know, I think pelicans nest uh, sometimes when hurricanes pass through. So it's not, you know, good for the, the chicks that are helpless and sitting in the nest for a couple of months when a storm comes by. The brown booby, a seabird, which is usually seen darting around and sitting on the buoys. <laughs> Magnificent frigate. Um, this bird soars way up high in the sky. They have a seven foot wingspan and they weigh less than like three pounds. They're very light bodied. They can be seen almost as high as airplanes. They hang out in the warm drafts. They're pretty fascinating. All the frigate birds that we see in the US Virgin Islands are coming from a colony in the BVI over by Tobago. Um, if you ever go over that way, literally like 900 birds will rise up off the island as you drive by. So it's pretty cool to see them. Unlike the other seabirds, they can't dive into the water to get their fish. They have a long hook bill so they can pluck the fish from the surface or they will harass other birds to drop their catch. And that's why they're called frigates because they're like pirates of the sky. I think this, oh no, this is the next to last bird. Um, another seabird, the royal tern. Lots of people notice the seagulls. They're here in the summertime. They're abundant. They're very obvious. But there's other seabirds that are white um, called terns. And this one's here right now. And he was counted for the Christmas bird count. And he's got that orange bill, the royal tern. <laughs> And I think this is the last slide. This is the osprey or the sea eagle. 
He migrates down here for the winter. You can see him perched on trees over the ocean looking to catch fish. They're, um, they're in lots of national parks. When I was displaced after Irma, I was in Jamaica Bay Wildlife Refuge. Still and not. Jamaica Bay has a program where they put up platform nests to encourage them uh, to, to nest. And so hopefully people counted lots of ospreys. So I think that's it for the show. And if people have any questions about the birds, I can take a few questions. Hi, thank you so much for doing this. This is Monica. Um, I had a question. Um, after the storm, uh, you were talking about the hummingbirds. We put out a lot of feeders uh, with water sugar water in them. And there was this one that had a very long curved beak and a purple throat. Okay. That yeah, I have never purple, seen yeah. before. Yeah. And I've never they, seen it since. <laughs> well, they used to be on the checklist for Virgin Islands National Park, the purple throated Carib. I've lived here for about 30 years. So I remember seeing them too. And um, after Hurricane Hugo and Marilyn, some of the birds did go off the radar. There was another hummingbird called the green mango. And those, those are the two that went off the radar and we hardly saw them anymore. I'm sure they're still you know, close by in Cuba and Puerto Rico and maybe Santa Domingo. But um, yeah, they're not reported uh, very much on St. John, but that's great that you saw one. Yeah, I live on Bordeaux and actually we have a lot of the bridal doves here. Yeah. You know, there's another um, bird that was dropped off the checklist on Bordeaux, the Puerto Rican screech owl. So maybe you'll get to see that one day. I've personally never seen it. But, you know, some of the birds, unfortunately, um, are not found in areas, you know, due to development or cats or pollution or whatever, the various regions, they just disappear from an area. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, well, if there's no further questions, um, like I said, I, I am thinking of starting up the bird walks again in February. So if you wanna get some fresh air and come outside and check out the birds, it's a good time to do it. And I will put something on social media on the park's Facebook page. Excellent, thank you so much, Laurel. That was really amazing. It was uh, fun to see the smiles on everyone's faces as they're listening to you each of the sounds. Um, so for the results of the Christmas bird count, is that something that gets published and shared? Um, it or? will be on the National Audubon Society's site. So Phyllis Benton, who's an integral part of the local Audubon Club, she's a bird rehabber and a birder. She is putting the data into the site. But um, Andrea Millen Coolen from the Daily News, a St. John resident, She's gonna write an article about it as soon as it's oh, done. Oh, great. So, yeah, I'm, I think Thursday is the day for St. John News in the paper. So mm -hmm. it might be in there, but it will be on the Audubon site. And if you come on the bird walks in February, I can share it with you because Phyllis will get the information to me. Excellent. Thank you so very much. If we don't have any more questions, uh, I will wrap us up here. Laurel, you're awesome. That was so fun. I felt like I was on the walk. I can't wait to do it with you again. Okay. Thank yeah. you. All right. Thank, Thank you, Laurel. You're okay. Thank you, See Laurel. You Thank yeah. you, Laurel. Great talk. Okay, good. Bye.